Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Grace Holland. This week, the state legislature started considering a bill that would make it illegal to wear a mask in public for health reasons. Republicans and those who support the ban say it would help police crack down on protesters who wear masks. Democratic lawmakers and others against it worry about possible health consequences of such a ban. WREL Capitol Bureau Chief Laura Leslie has been digging into the legal implications of this bill and joins us from the legislative building. Laura, thanks for joining me. Thanks for inviting me. So what is the background that led us to this point that this bill is even being introduced? Well, back in the 1950s, um, North Carolina passed a law at the time to outlaw masks. And the target at the time was for example, the, the Ku Klux Klan, right, driving around with masks on to scare people. So they wanted to stop that. So they passed a law against masks in public, although they made a few exceptions for things like holidays and, you know, like Halloween and so forth. Sure. Um, during COVID, it was pointed out that we were all being told to mask, but that was technically illegal under North Carolina law. So lawmakers went and changed that law so people would not be breaking the law by wearing masks. Now they want to change it back, or some of them do anyway, because they say that protesters and criminals are taking advantage of the fact that masks are legal and using it as an opportunity to do things that they shouldn't be doing say things that they shouldn't do intimidate people in public places so what they want to do is remove the exception for public health and safety but you know the, the, the obviously the quandary that gets you into is the number of people who actually need to wear those masks for public health and safety for right. reasons like comp- compromised immune system. Um, you might have had an organ transplant. You might be undergoing chemotherapy. I mean, there's, there are a lot of reasons that asthma, and you know, there are reasons that people do wear them, like legitimately. Right, exactly. And why is this happening now? I mean, at this point, we're about four years out from COVID. So what is it about the timing now that we're starting to consider potentially targeting protesters in this way or trying to enforce protesters in this way? Well, it's the Gaza protests that we've been seeing, you know, um, all over the news, our news as well as everybody else's, um, seeing lots of protesters, pro-Palestinian protesters on college campuses and downtown. Um, and in most cases, many of them or all of them are wearing masks. And so they say that this is allowing these people to engage in behavior that they would not otherwise engage in if, if people knew who they were. And so they say that they want to, you know, to remove this possibility. Um, So that's really, I think, what sparked this particular moment. And how would this bill work if it passed or the ban, rather, just knowing that obviously the intention of it is to target these protesters. But as you pointed out, it, it specifically says you can't wear a mask for health reasons just generally, too. Right. It would just remove the exemption for that. And so. There was a version of the bill, <clears throat> excuse me, an older version of the bill that simply said you couldn't wear a mask while protesting. Mm. Um, but they decided to expand that this in the Senate bill, um, the Senate version of the bill, I should say, um, to say just you can't wear a mask, period. Mm-hmm. So because I think they were thinking that people would try to use the health and safety reasons as a loophole, you know, to, to be able to wear masks. And so they're trying to close that loophole. But, you know, that, again, as you point out, but that presents a real problem for people who actually do need to wear the mask. Now, what the sponsors of the bill say is that nobody is going to be prosecuted for wearing a mask. This was not a problem pre-COVID. Um, uh, we didn't see Granny getting um, uh, arrested in the Walmart. I, I trust people's good common sense. Uh, I trust law enforcement's good common sense. It is a first class misdemeanor, by the way, which is the highest misdemeanor. Uh, comes with six to 18 months of probation and a fine uh, mm. if you were to be convicted. You know, but different communities have different relationships with police. Um, and, you know, then that, you know, critics of the bill have pointed out that, you know, what about a black teenager with asthma, like a, a, you know, a, a man, you know, wearing a mask? Is he, is this a reason for him to be harassed by police? Well, they're immunocompromised people. They're people with various kinds of disabilities and uh, diseases who, um, uh, who, for whom it really is life or death and whether or not they can leave their home. Basically, the point they're making is that relying on the police to police it a certain way isn't the answer. They're saying that the law should be specific and, you know, you shouldn't be asking people who need masks to do something illegal that they know is illegal um, or make the choice between leaving their house safely, you know, but then having to having to commit a crime to do it. 
All right. Well, let's take a quick break right there, and we'll be right back. Laura, before the break, you were going through sort of the arguments for and against this mask ban. Um, And I know you've been talking to some legal experts about this. So first of all, uh, who did you talk to? I spoke to a couple of people, but uh, probably the most helpful was Tara Muller. She is the policy analyst, policy expert over at um, Disability Rights NC, a group that represents people with disabilities. We have received a lot of calls um, from very concerned family members and people with disabilities. Yes, from um, everything from people who are immunocompromised to people who have had, you know, organ transplants, people with medically fragile children who, you know, who are concerned about breaking the law when they make, uh, you know, the choice to exercise reasonable caution to protect their own health and safety. So yes, it is frustrating. We don't believe that the bill sponsor's intent is to target people with disabilities who are just, you know, taking steps to protect their health. Um, But what we do know is in the, all these years that that law was in place, you know, people, the law of the world was different back then. People didn't know about the law. People didn't know that they were intentionally breaking the law. And what we're asking people to do now is intentionally break the law now that they know about it. Um, and it puts people in a deeply troubling condition. People with disabilities who have enough on their plate right now, right? They're worried about accessing healthcare and accessing affordable, accessible housing and everything else. They don't need an additional concern when they're just trying to take steps to protect their health. So her take on it is that this violates the American with Disab- Americans with Disabilities Act. To the extent that people with disabilities have the right to assemble, then yes, it does violate their rights. Um, there is a right that requires people to be to to um, have access to their community in an integrated environment so that they're not segregated. It's called the Olmstead Act. You know, she said that when you know, if you're basically telling people who need masks that they can't wear masks in public you are stopping them from being able to go about their everyday life because of their disability, which is counter to the ADA. Do we know, you know, if this bill uh, completely gets through, passes, uh, and I know it's only gone through the Senate at this point, but if we got to that point where it was passed, do we know whether there would be legal challenges or are those likely? It seems likely that that would be the case, you know, but um, in the meantime, you know, as, as Mueller pointed out, you have scenario where people are probably going to get arrested and go through the consequences of that, the arrest record. Our police officers are not in the business of determining on the spot whether something is in violation of one federal law versus a state law, right? So what we will see in practice, whether or not there is some underlying law that protects people with disabilities to go about their world, um, what we'll see in practice is people being arrested and then having to deal with the consequences at the end of the day. Will this disproportionately affect certain populations and not others? We won't know until it comes right down to it. But we shouldn't be in the business of making laws that we don't intend to enforce. Nobody wants to scare people who need masks out of being able to go and participate in their lives, right? And that's what they're concerned about, you know. Um, And it's interesting that, you know, the, the bill sponsor said that they would consider making some changes to it in the House to try to accommodate people with, a, with an actual medical need for a mask. I don't know what that would look like. And Democrats in the Senate actually offered some amendments during the debate day before yesterday, but they, uh, they they were not accepted by the Republicans. So I don't know what those exceptions might end up looking like. You know, it, it is interesting to me that, you know, the Democrats in the Senate, at least, they understand kind of the point that the, the bill is trying to get at. And they, you know, they see it as a way to also say that the Proud Boys can't wear masks, mm. right? Or people, you know, people on the right wing can't wear masks either. They're saying, we understand why you don't want people to be protesting wearing masks, but there has to be a way to walk this line, you know, to thread this needle so that people who need them still have the ability to wear them. Right. And, and that is kind of interesting that we're at a place where most legislators can agree on the protesting element of this. It's that public safety part that seems like a little bit specific here. And also, I should note that not everybody agrees with that. Sure. <clears throat> you know, the ACLU and some other groups say that this is going to chill free speech. They say that when people go out to protest and they're not wearing masks, that they often get docked. They have their mm-hmm. personal information put on the Internet, you know, license plates, you know, place of employment, et cetera, et cetera. They say so sometimes people are wearing these to protect themselves from the consequences of being seen at a protest. And that could be true in the left and the right. You know, but that brings up the question, you know, what does the freedom to assemble actually include? 
and is is anonymity part of that? Right, especially when you're in a public space. Right. Looking forward, like you said, we we don't know if there will be any amendments to this in the House and if there were what those will look like quite yet. But what is the likelihood that this in some form is going to pass? And do we know when it would go into effect? It seems likely that this will pass in some form in the House. Um, I talked to House Speaker Tim Moore about it, and he, you know, he said he understands the concerns, but, you know, like the bill sponsors, you know, his, his position is that, well, it's just not going to be enforced Mm -hmm. against people who are not protesting or up to something nefarious. Right. So I don't know whether we'll see those changes made in the house or not, but you know, he definitely was support for the concept behind it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Laura. And thank you for listening to the WREL Daily Download. Another great way to get WREL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email that's waiting in your inbox every morning with local news, events, and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com newsletter.